Welcome to another video. This is not a functional equation. It is just composition. But whenever you solve some functional equations, this might be one of the strategies you may need to adopt, which is the composition of a function with itself. And in this case, it looks like we're doing it three times, then multiplying it by itself. So um, you have to know how to compose a function with itself the required number of times to figure out what the problem is. So this is just one of those skills we'll need in the future or in some other problems we're going to take care of um, in the future. But for this one, I would like you to give it a shot and see if we get the same answer. It is not a difficult exercise. It is only difficult if you make mistakes. So the first thing we need to do is know what our function is. Our function is such that if you give it x, it will change it into this. It will subtract 1 from x and divide the result by 1 added to x itself. So let's see what the innermost is going to be. So the innermost function is f composed with f of x. And what does that look like? This is what it looks like. So we know, let's do this first. So f composed with f of x simply means that what you're going to be given now is f of x and see this is how I want you to do it so you don't make mistakes. Remember that whatever you give to f, to f it will write it this way. So why don't you say this is going to be f of x minus 1 over f of x plus 1. This makes it a lot easier. But what exactly is f of x? f of x is x minus 1 over x plus 1. So you can say this is the same thing as x minus 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 divided by x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 1. So that's our first composition. Now, can we simplify this? Yes. The easiest way to simplify this is to look at all the fractions in this complex fraction and say the denominator here is x plus 1, the denominator here is x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by x plus 1. And you can do it this way. Gen sometimes people just draw a line and multiply by x plus 1, which means every term is going to be multiplied by x plus 1. Okay, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to multiply the top by x plus 1. I'm going to multiply the bottom also by x plus 1. So if I do this, let me put this in parentheses. So it means each term is going to be multiplied by x plus 1. Remember, the denominator is what you use. So this multiplied by x plus 1 will get rid of this. And this multiplied by x plus 1 will give you x plus 1 with a negative before it and the same thing. So we can conclude that f of f of x will be equal to, if you multiply this by this, this will cancel this out. So you have x minus 1 left. And if you multiply minus 1 by this, you're going to end up with minus x minus 1. You're going to have minus x minus 1. That's what's left on top. And then we go to the bottom. If we do the same thing, this multiplies this, you're going to have x minus 1. And if you multiply this by this, you're going to end up with plus x plus 1. So you're going to have plus x plus 1. So what do we have? f of f of x um, will be equal to, if we simplify this, this x cancels this x. So what is left on top is just minus 2. And this minus 1 will get rid of this plus 1. So you have this and this. So you're going to have just 2x. And we can simplify by canceling out the 2s. We end up with negative 1 over x. This is negative 1 over x. Let me write it as um, minus 1 over x. That's the safest way to write that. So we know that what is in here is negative 1 over x. This is what we just calculated. So the next move is to find the 
third composition. So we say that f of f of f of x then will be equal to f of negative 1 over x. Nice. So you just need, this is now the new argument which we got from the previous one. So what does f do again? Let's go to the beginning. What, what f, what it does to x is it subtracts 1 from it and divides the answer by adding 1 to x, by 1 added to x. So we're going to do the same thing. What would f do to this? What would it do? Well, we know that f of negative 1 over x is going to be subtract 1 from this, so that's minus 1 over x minus 1, and divide the answer by minus 1 over x, add 1 to it. So how do we simplify this? The same strategy we adopted here. Look at the denominators. The denominator here is x, the denominator here is x. It's the same thing, so we just need to multiply the top and bottom by x. So we're going to say this is equal to x divided by x, so we're multiplying. So if I multiply this by this, what do I get? If x multiplies this expression, you're going to end up with just minus 1 because this x cancels this, so we have minus 1. If x multiplies this, you get minus x, and you're done. And then you do the same thing to the bottom, it's going to be minus 1, this time this is going to be plus x. Okay, this looks familiar. Let's simplify this. We can write the bottom as x minus 1. We can write the top as, we can factor out a minus. Okay, so we can write this to be the same thing as minus, if you factor out minus, on top you're going to end up with 1 plus x. And in the bottom, you can switch the positions of these and give you, it will give you x minus 1. So we can actually say, I could have done that here. So this is equal to, well, I'm going to show you. So this is the same thing as negative x plus 1 over x minus 1. x plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, can get rid of this now. So finally, we just need to multiply this by this. Well, we already have the answer to this. It is this guy negative x plus 1 over x minus 1. So this is equal to, let's write it here. This will be equal to um, negative x plus 1 over x minus 1. And we're going to be multiplying it by f of x. What's f of x? It's x minus 1 over x plus 1. x minus 1 over x plus 1. Let's put these in parentheses so you can see how beautifully compatible they are. So now we can cancel things out. This can cancel this out and this can cancel this out. So what you're left with a negative answer and your answer is 1. Negative 1. Beautiful. Now, in another problem we're going to do, you will see how this becomes very relevant because it's one of the strategies you adopt in order to find what the functional equation you're trying to find um, is. I don't know how that makes sense, but never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.